How Prada Became a Successful Fashion Brand As we all know, the world of fashion is packed with a large number of well-known companies. Some might be coming into your head already, huh? Well, each of these may be placed into one of two categories, the luxury category and the other one's the affordable category. While there are over a dozen brands that are accessible to consumers on a limited budget and are popular in many parts of the world, there are only a handful of luxury brands that are really regarded as evergreen classics. You must have gotten the idea of the brand we'll be talking about. To make the picture clear, let us give you a hint. It is an Italian luxury brand. Well, the name is Prada, and this brand never goes out of style. But how did Prada become such a powerful fashion brand? And how successful is Prada today? Are you interested to find out? Well, stay tuned to Success Stories to get to know about it all. And without any further ado, we'll get started. Prada is a luxury fashion firm that was established by Mario Prada in the city of Milan, Italy in the year 1913. It began as a leather goods store, and the company has since diversified its product offering to include ready-to-wear garments, accessories, and fragrances. Prada was originally known for its leather products, and Prada does, of course, still sell leather goods such as handbags and shoes. They may be purchased in Prada's actual shops as well as online fashion sites where a now now discount code can be used for the purchase price. Examining Prada's past and legacy is necessary if we are interested in understanding how this particular brand came to enjoy such widespread acclaim. As a result, without any further ado, we'll talk about a concise history of Prada, which is among the most recognizable brands in the entire globe. Prada was initially established in 1913 by Mario and Martino Prada as a leather goods shop known as Fratelli Prada. Mario and Martino were brothers. The store was located in Milan, Italy, and it offered a variety of steamer handbags and trunks imported from England in addition to other animal-related things. Mario, one of the founders of Prada, was adamant that no woman in the Prada family should ever hold a position of power inside the company since he felt that women had no place in the working world. Surprisingly, it was his daughter Luisa who took over the business when he passed away because his son had no interest in continuing the family enterprise. Muichia Prada, Luisa Prada's daughter, joined the firm in 1970 and became its owner in 1978. Luisa Prada would continue the business for over 20 years until passing it down to her daughter. The 1980s Prada Marketing Campaign Muichia met Patrizio Bertelli, an Italian businessman, before 1978 when she became the successor to the Prada business. Patrizio Bertelli would later become Muichia's business manager. And again, in 1978, Miuccia became the successor to the Prada business. Prada was able to become one of the most prominent brands in the 1970s with the assistance of Bertelli. And this was accomplished by the firm beginning in 1979 to offer backpacks and tote bags, which contributed to Prada's rise to popularity. When compared to leather, the military-grade black nylon that was used to construct the purses that Prada offered during that time was considerably more robust and long-lasting. Prada decided to hire booths in upmarket department stores and boutiques in a variety of nations across the world so that their bags might have a greater reach on the market. Prada was able to open a second store in 1983 at Milan's Galleria Vittorio Emanuele because of the popularity of their handbags at the time. Prada was able to grow its presence in several countries after the launch of its second boutique by creating new boutiques in other nations, particularly in the United States and France. In 1984, in addition to the newly opened stores, a shoe line was also introduced. Then in 1985, Prada released what would become known as the classic Prada handbag, which would go on to be one of the company's best-selling products for a number of years. The wedding between Bertelli and Muccia Prada took place in 1987. Prada debuted its first women's ready-to-wear collection just two years after its initial launch. Prada during the 1990s. Prada had already established itself as one of the most prestigious names in the fashion world when the 1990s began. Muccia and her business partner Bertelli came up with the idea to launch a new high fashion company under the name Miu Miu. The name is a play on Muccia's childhood nickname Miu Miu, which was used when she was younger. Prada is now a well-known brand, and in contrast to Prada, which creates designs that are elegant and refined, Miu Miu caters to a clientele that is predominantly composed of younger people who have an interest in high fashion. In 1994, sales for Miu Miu hit $210 million, which is quite a stunning amount for a brand that had only been around for a short while. On the other hand, Miu Chia and Bertelli did not forget about Prada, as evidenced by the fact that in 1996, they created a new Prada boutique in Manhattan, New York. Prada already had 40 locations throughout the world by the middle of the 90s, and 20 of those branches were situated in Japan, which is a country that is highly famous for both Prada and Miu Miu. 
1996, Crop RBV was established as a result of the merger between the original Prada business, which was controlled by Mucia, with another company held by Bertelli. Later on, the name of the company was changed to Prada BV to maintain the integrity of the Prada brand name for the sake of marketing. Patrizio Bertelli was appointed to the position of Chief Executive Officer of the newly formed business. The acquisition of shares in the Gucci Group was one of the first things that Bertelli undertook after being named CEO of Prada. On the other hand, he would ultimately sell those shares to Bernard Arnault, the head of LVMH in 1998, for a total of $140 million. Prada was able to acquire ownership holdings in a number of other fashion companies in addition to Gucci. These fashion companies include Church & Company, Jill Sander AG, and the company that Helmut Lang founded. Prada and the Dirigo Group also went into business together to create a joint venture that would allow Prada to develop, manufacture, and market their own line of eyewear. In October 1999, Prada teamed forces with LVMH in order to acquire a 51% share in the company Fendi. The Decade of the 2000s and Beyond for Prada By the turn of the millennium, Prada had amassed a debt of $850 million, which can most likely be linked back to the unsuccessful collections and acquisitions that the company attempted to accomplish throughout the 90s. In the year 2001, Bertelli was forced to sell the company's interest in Fendi because of pressure from his bankers. Prada sold its other properties in 2006, including names like Guy, Helmut Lang, and Jill Sander, amongst others. This was part of the company's strategy to reduce its overall holdings, and the profits from these transactions were distributed to many other corporations. Prada was able to dig itself out of the financial hole it had created for itself, however, by selling some of those other companies and brands that it owned. And this time around, the corporation decided against expanding by purchasing more businesses and instead intended to focus entirely on the collection that was associated with the brand. Prada decided in July 2016 to offer its apparel and other products for the first time ever online. This was done to expand their market even more. Prada shares on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange increased to 14% by 2018 as a direct result of the brand's increased availability through online retail outlets. Despite suffering financial setbacks throughout the 2000s, Prada was successful in reviving its brand name and appeal by making its goods and wares available to a wider variety of customers, and this enabled the company to attract new customers. Prada has successfully re-established itself as one of the most prominent luxury brands in the world today. So that's going to do it for today's video, friends. We'll be back with more similar stories in the near future. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you share it with all your friends and family and fellow fashion fans in your inner circle and fans of successful business stories. Also, we'd like for you to please subscribe to our channel by pressing the bell icon. That way you'll always be notified of our latest uploads as soon as they happen. Thanks for spending time with us today and we'll look forward to doing it again soon. Have a great day.